With the recent introduction of macOS 10 Catalina, Apple has completely removed iTunes from the operating system. So I thought it'd be fun to look back at the original version of iTunes. So here we are in macOS 9.2.2 and I have an iTunes installer. Okay, nice and quick. If we go into the hard drive, we have an iTunes folder. And here we have the original version of iTunes, iTunes 1.0. So if we launch it, there we are. Now the brushed metal interface was, uh, was new. So on the left hand side here we have this column where you would add all your playlists or your library contains all of your music and then we have radio tuner which unfortunately no longer works but you could listen to um, internet radio streams find them quite easily that doesn't do anything at the moment although we do have network connectivity um, down the bottom we have some buttons here this allows you to create a new uh, playlist this would then play that playlist in a random order or this would continually play the playlist and then we have a visualization button and an eject button. So let's add some music to our library. Now at the moment you'd think, oh, it hasn't done anything, but we're looking at radio tuner, so we need to go back to the library. And we have some we have two MP3s here and a, and a WAV file. Now the reason why we have the WAV file is Apple included an MP3 encoder in iTunes, which allows you to import CDs and encode them directly into MP3, or you could have WAV files or AIFF files, um, and then convert those into MP3 as well. So if we look at this one, this is a 27.2 megabyte WAV file, and if we click on the advanced menu, we get an option to convert it to MP3. So if we now look at the size of this file, it's 3.7 megabytes. So it's almost 10 times smaller. It's encoded it at 192 kilobits a second. And it's got version 2.2 of the ID3 tags. Now, just pause that for a moment. If we get info, again, we can edit the tags and we can decide whether or not we want to start playback and stop playback at particular times. Um, if you had a particularly quiet MP3, you could increase the volume of it. So let's just change. I'll do the same for this one. If you had lots, you could uh, quickly skip backwards and forwards. If you had several, you could highlight them all at once and you could edit them. Now you get a very limited amount of information that you can edit. So basically the artist, the album, the year, the genre. That's because we've highlighted multiple songs and you can apply all of these to multiple tracks all at once, which is quite nice. So I'm going to get rid of that one from the library and then change this one. There we are. So when a, a track is playing, you can press this button. You see a nice visualization of what the audio track is doing. We've got left and right channels. 
Well, down the bottom here, if we press the visualization button, At the top here we have a search, so if you had a, a large library you could really quickly and, and simply search for an artist, a song, any number of the ID3 tags. This button removes the column browser, so if you had a whole bunch of different albums from a particular artist, you could click on the on the artist itself, you'd see all the albums and then below that you would see the tracks. So if you had a, a particularly large album, you could quite easily jump backwards and forwards or use the search. Over here, we can create playlists. And then we could add whichever songs we want to that particular playlist. And you can reorder them in any way you want, or you can simply click on the column headers and sort by column heading or duration or artist. Then what you could do is this burn CD button appears and if you had a supported CD burner you could simply press this button, that's not going to work for me because I, I don't have a D, uh, CD burner, um, and it would allow you to burn that playlist to a CD. Now the burning and the importing of audio was done as fast as your machine uh, could handle the data basically. Um, a lot of the earlier third party MP3 players would limit you on how fast you could import or how fast you could burn because they basically wanted you to pay for the pro version if you like um, and unlock the, the speed of importing and burning. And that was one of the one things that Apple didn't do. So if we have a quick look at the preferences, there's actually not very much in here. It's literally all about the audio, which is what I really, really wish iTunes had, had kept. Now it's nice that the new music app on Mac OS X Catalina just removes all the gumph and that allows you just to get back to the music, but there's still quite a number of options in there. So under here we can change the, the size of text, uh, shows a genre when browsing, connect to the internet when needed, so if you clicked on ra uh, Radio Tuner, um, it would automatically, if you had a, a, an internet connection, bearing in mind back in the day when these machines were launched and iTunes was, was released, most people connected to the internet with modems. So under Advanced, this is where the iTunes music library is, is kept. Here we can change the um, import settings, so we can change the MP3 encoder, or we can use AIFF or WAV, um, and then we can choose the quality. So highest quality is 192 kilobits a second. The default is actually 160, or you can do a custom one, and you can say go all the way up to 320 if you wanted it to be variable bit rate. Um, so yeah, you've got quite a few options to play around with the MP3 encoding there. And then down here we have streaming buffer size, so we could have a, a large streaming buffer, so if you perhaps um, didn't have a very fast internet connection, um, it could buffer quite a, a lot of uh, audio, so it would uh, play back a little bit more smoothly. So that's it, iTunes version 1.0 was released back in 2000, 2001. So yeah, that's uh, iTunes 1.0. I hope you enjoyed that quick look at uh, iTunes and uh, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.